Well, I was just made aware of this article, and I guess I got to do a, a story on it. And this is probably going to be a little depressing. Just what I need right now, right? <laughs> um, look, I have publicly stated that I thought Leslie Jones's character in the reboot was actually the best character in the reboot. Right? I will never like the reboot. That's never going to change. And it has nothing to do with the fact that they were women. I am so sick and tired of that narrative still to this day. Uh, seven years after the fact, being pushed is just, it's just ridiculous. It really is. But uh, Leslie Jones is writing a book. And she's talking about the reboot and everything. And she went through some shit with this. I mean, she was getting death threats and that over this fucking movie. Which is totally not cool. Right? You don't like the movie, fine. That's one thing. But to threaten the lives with racist comments and death threats and all that of the cast and crew involved, that's just fucked up. Like, I recall doing a video where I actually defended her on, on that aspect. I'm like, yo, that's not cool. So anyway, let's go through this and give my honest thoughts and opinions here. Leslie Jones, racist Ghostbusters trolls nearly broke me. In this exclusive excerpt from the Leslie fucking Jones at Memorial, the comedian writes about how difficult the all-female Ghostbusters was for her. All right? Let's see. I don't like this movie, the journalist said, and you got five minutes to prove me that it's worth watching. The cast of Ghostbusters was on a press junket somewhere in Europe, and some guy with a German or Scandinavian or Russian accent or whatever had just had the balls to say that the movie we just made wasn't worth it, and that we owed him an explanation. Okay, Leslie, first off, let me stop you there. The way the guy was going about it, according to your description, not cool. Totally not cool. But you have you have to have understand this going in. This was a reboot that totally dismissed the first two films in a beloved eighties franchise. That totally dismissed all that and, and took the brand name and making it its own thing without any connection to the original outside of uh pretty lousy cameos. You had to expect that. You, There's no way you couldn't have. I, I, you're an intelligent person. You had to know that going in. Anyway, Ghostbusters came out July 11, 2016, but before it even had... Before it had even hit the movie theaters, it had been the subject of the tense online abuse, and no surprise that I was the one who got most of the hate. For a start, sad keyboard warriors living in their mother's... Bed. Here we go again with that. Okay. Leslie. Let me finish this. Let me finish the sentence and I'll, uh, yeah. I was, for start, a sad keyboard warriors living in their mother's basement hated the fact that this hallowed work of perfect art now featured gas horror women in the lead roles. I can't speak for everyone. Wasn't the case for me. The case I made was this was a pointless reboot when we wanted a continuation. Worst of all, of course, was that one of the lead characters was a black woman. For some men, this was the final straw. For some men, not for me. I mean, Winston was in the original. He was a black male in the original. It wasn't just racism and misog misogyny, either. A lot of it had to do with the fact that I was playing an MTA worker and thought that I was something that I should be ashamed of. I've tried to fight back. I was a comic. I used some... I was used to someone heckling me, so every piece of bullshit on Twitter, I had a reply. What does being an MTA worker have to do with anything? I've had family members for generations being railroad and MTA workers. Like, how is that looked upon? Like, I don't get that aspect. I'm sorry. I'm not trying to pick on you here. I'm being honest. If they made me a scientist, you would be mad at what type of scientist. Seriously, it's a fucking... Movie, get over yourselves. You haven't seen the movie yet, so you don't know what my character is. You go buy a trailer. Oh my god, y'all that arrogant. So this isn't... So an MTA worker trash? Apparently some people had a problem with that. I, I never had a problem with that. Why can't a regular person be a Ghostbuster? Regular people save the world every day. So if I'm the stereotype, so be it. 
We walk among heroes and take them for granted. It's not a man, woman, race, class thing. It's a Ghostbusters thing. As far as I'm concerned, we're all Ghostbusters. Stand tall. All right. I'm with you there. Eight days after the movie premiered, I took my Twitter account down so we could work out who was trying to hack me. There had been multiple attempts to hack me by this point, and there had been so much racist abuse that I had no choice. I wrote, I'm leaving Twitter tonight with tears and a very sad heart. All this because I did a movie. You can hate the movie, but the shit I got today, wrong. I agree with you on that. Oh, God, the shit you probably had to deal with. Earlier that same evening, I got a tweet from Jack Dorsey. Him. He was aware that I was being brutally attacked with racial slurs and worse, and started putting people... And started putting people on my account. This was basically the start of Twitter taking this shit more seriously. Jack put people on my account to monitor it because someone is always trying to hack me. It's a daily occurrence. But with Musk, who knows? Either way, I have my own security on that account now. And there's the cover of the book. People made such a big deal of the fact that me taking my Twitter account down rather than why I had to take it down. It was simple. I was shutting it down temporarily while working out what to do with these motherfuckers hitting me. And anyways, it was back up the next day. That night of July 18th was horrible, though. I do remember crying and thinking, "Is this is the first time I ever had seen it so bad. How do you all get together to bully a person? It wasn't as if I committed a crime or something. I was being bullied over a movie, over playing a part in a movie. I can't believe I have to say this out loud. Well, sadly, it's the internet. People will bully you for anything. Trust me, I've been bullied myself. People will bully you because of how you look, because of your race, because of your gender, because of your sexual orientation, because of your religion. Any reason for people to bully other people, they'll find a reason to. It's, it's really fucked up. And with you being in the spotlight, especially in a, a remake, a reboot of a movie... That's a much beloved film. I mean, it is going to draw a crowd. And the worst of the worst came out for that. And that's really fucked up. And it, you shouldn't have had to go through that. I, 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 Look, I didn't like the movie. But that shit was fucked up. The weakness of, of motherfuckers amazed me. I cried not because I was being bullied, but because this is our world and because I can't believe anyone would do this shit to someone, anyone, for working. This is awful. I am in a movie. Death threats for, for something as small as that. The world is not as rosy as I hope it was. But none of that shit was about me. But then the same night, Keith McKinnon came over. We drank some wine and then went on about my business. Of all of women in Paul remake of the movie. I was the one who got taken through the ringer. I wonder why. Oh, right, because I am I was a black girl. I was being sent films of being hanged, of white guys jerking off to my picture saying, you fucking... I'm not, I'm not saying that word. We're going to kill you. That is fucked. Why are people being so evil to each other? How can you just sit and type, I want to kill you? Who does that? Well, six psychotic people. Teenagers. Or mentally ill people, or just fucking hateful, nasty motherfuckers. And because it's the internet, there's no real accountability. Because they do it from behind a screen, behind a a, 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 a troll account or whatever. Sadly, that's f fucking how it is. And it wasn't just racist shit either. When I started doing the movie, this was when I really started seeing not only racism, but classism. See, this is right here. This part coming up, this I'm going to have big issues with. Even the director of Ghostbusters Afterlife, Jason Reitman, who was the son of the original director, Ivan, said something unforgivable when discussing his new version that came out in 2021. On Bill Burr's podcast, he said this about our version of Ghostbusters. We are in every way trying to take, trying to go back to the original technique and hand the movie back to the fans. First off, I don't recall him saying that. But here's the other thing, Leslie. It's not all about you. Okay? He's going back to formula. He's going back to what made the original great, the original storyline, the original actors, and evolving it. He's going in a different direction than your fucking shitty reboot. Okay? And that statement had nothing to do with you personally. That I'm going to call you out on. Okay? 
They tried the reboot. It went in a different direction. It didn't go over well, as you clearly know. And then they went back to formula. That had nothing to do with sexism, and that had nothing to do with racism. So the fact that you took that personally, and that's unforgivable, that says way more about you than what actually happened. So I'm going to call you out on that shit. He did try to walk it back tweeting, Wow, that came out wrong. I have nothing but admiration for Paul and Leslie and Kate and Melissa and Kristen and the bravery of which they made Ghostbusters 2016. They expanded the universe and made an amazing movie. But the damage was done. Bringing up the ideas of giving back the movie back to fans was a pretty clear shout-out to all those losers who went out after us for making an all-female film. No, Leslie, it's not. You're taking it that way. And that's your opinion. You're entitled to your opinion, but you're wrong. The fucking new film, the new team, are young kids under the age of 20. Half of them were female. You had Lucky, who was a black young female, and you had Phoebe, who was a uh, white young female. So this idea that, oh, it's sexist and racist is total, total bullshit. Because... Two of the four, two of the four characters in the fucking new team, they're kids under the age of twenty, and one's a black woman and the other one's just a white woman. I, so, like, you're making that about you. Uh, it was made clear to me at this time during the process I was so lucky to even be on that movie. But honestly, I was thinking I don't have to be in this motherfucker, especially as I got paid way less than Melissa McCarthy and Kristen. Well, here we go. Here we go. Okay, Melissa McCarthy and Christian Wig, even at the time, were bigger names than you. That's how Hollywood works. The bigger the name, the more clout, the more money. Okay? I wasn't even really that aware of you until this film. I hate to break it to you, but that's... I knew of Melissa McCarthy and Christian Wig. I wouldn't say I was a fan of either of them, but I've heard their names, you know. Not... No knock on them, but my first offer was to do the movie for $67,000. I had to fight to get even more. In the end, I ended up getting one hundred and fifty k. But the message was clear. This is going to blow you up. After this, you're made for life. All that kind of shit. And I thought I hadn't had decades of... As though I haven't had a decades of successful career already. And in the end, it all made me was heartache and one big-ass controversy. Okay. First off, the fact that you believe that. Look, I got none against you. You were on SNL. You were at that time. I don't know currently. I really never really heard the name Leslie Jones until the reboot. And I'm not super into comedy and all that. But, I, you know, I do have an awareness of pop culture and movies. I never really heard of you until before this movie. And even with all the hate and all that, dislike of the movie, I even said you were the funniest thing in that movie. You're kind of making this a little bit about you. And I get it, it's your book, but... <laughs> I mean, you can't you can't compare Melissa McCarthy and Kirsten Wegg to you and Kate McKinnon, who... Yes, I, I, I'm assuming, I don't know the history. Uh, you guys were big on SNL. But I hadn't seen, I hadn't really known either of you two before this movie. I'm just being real. Alright? Fortunately, I learned a lot from Melissa on that shoot. If she looked at a shot and she didn't think it was right, she suggests that we shot from a different side or angle. Back then, I didn't know you could change your shots until I saw Melissa and Kirsten do it. And these days, I do the same kind of things that they did on Ghostbusters. But listen, I had a great time, too. I bonded with Kate. I loved Boston. Became part of the Bostonians. They were right by Fenway. We'd walk from the set to a beautiful park to the hotel. People would recognize us, come by to say hi. I loved the city and being trained and being trained to do and then do stunts themselves. I loved that. And the crew was fucking incredible, too. Really sweet and helpful. I recently did a shoot in Boston, and some of the crew talked about making Ghostbusters. They had great memories, which helped me see the positives, too. I think that's why one of the worst things about that movie is that it should have been a great film. The crew deserved for y'all to see the movie we actually made, but a lot of stuff got cut for cost. Yeah, because 
Paul Feig wouldn't listen to anyone and wanted to do things, and it ended up costing him more money. Dan Aykroyd spoke out about that. What no one realizes to this day is that me and Kate had some great moments that you didn't get to see. There were moments with Melissa and Kirsten that got cut, too. If I thought they were important and explain how their friendship came to be in the movie. If they had released the movie as we shot it, I swear things would have been different. From your perspective, I can see how you can think that. No, no. The movie, let me, let me explain something. The movie was doomed from the beginning. The very fact it was a reboot. Had it been an all-male reboot, it still would have been doomed. Okay, let me explain that. The whole movie, the way, the best metaphor I can use is you you were taking a solid story, a solid foundation, and wiping away everything to replace it with a weaker foundation that just used the iconography. So, the very fact for me that it was a reboot is what doomed the film. Right? And then the marketing, and then the whole attack the audience thing. You guys did attack the audience. Look, I get it. You guys were getting attacked. You decided to lash back. Fine. And in some instances, you were right. Against haters and trolls and sexists and racists and all that. In that case, I get it. But what about the people who just didn't like the idea of it being a reboot? What about the women who didn't like the film? Are they sexist against their own gender? I don't understand that mentality of attacking people who generally just didn't like it being a reboot. I think the popular narrative, because it gains sympathy and pity, is that if you didn't like the movie, you're, you hate, you're a racist, sexist troll. For some people, yes. For most people, no. Uh, anyway. Uh, there were moments where, where did I leave off. Uh, if they had released a movie, Paul Fig was awesome during the shooting when we were doing improv all over the place and there was even a dance scene that was so dope. Michelle Williams, God rest... Michael Williams, excuse me. God rest his soul. Choreographed a scene where Chris Hemsworth was... Possessed took over the whole army. It was like really funny, weird version of Thriller. Chris was standing on top of a movie theater dancing while Michael Williams was in the front of all the FBI agents and and soldiers on the ground just killing it. It was the best thing. The day of that taping, we were so excited because we figured when people saw this, they were going to lose it. Nope, it got cut. The reason given that was the special effects needed were too expensive or some bullshit. But this film can't afford... But if this film can't afford special effects, then what the fuck are we doing making a Ghostbusters movie in the first place? Then there was a fight scene I shot that also got cut. Oh, she's pissing me off with this statement here. I'm sorry. When they later announced that Jason Reitman movie Afterlife, which completely ignored the fact that they had been given an all-female version... And all that was given back to the fans, shit, I could not stay quiet. I had to say something. I wrote on Twitter, so insulting, like, fuck us, we didn't count. It's like something you know who would do. You know whose voice. We're gonna redo Ghostbusters better with men, it will be huge, those women ain't Ghostbusters. Oh, so annoying, such a dick move. And I don't give a fuck, I'm saying something. Turns out in that excitement I, I felt walking... Turns out that excitement I felt walking down Fifth Avenue after my meeting with Paul Feig, it morphed into a learning experience, but part of it was really painful, too. <sighs> Leslie. Your ego now is affecting your judgment here. Going back to formula, going back to what made the original work, going back to the original storyline had nothing to do with you. Sony, in their infinite stupidity, tried something different with the reboot. It turned out to be a disaster. So they're going back to what works. And you know what? What works was largely a success because that film got a sequel. It's getting a sequel. It's mostly filmed right now. <laughs> you can't make what you 
want to make when you when you have a franchise. You make what the fans want. Because the fans are the one paying the money to go see the fucking film. If you go into if you go into McDonald's and you order a Big Mac and someone hands you a taco and they hand you a taco because they themselves don't like Big Macs and they try to force you to eat a taco, you're gonna go, What the fuck? I didn't come here for a taco. If I wanted to go to a taco, I'd go to Taco Bell. You're making this about you in that instance when it's not. Your your ego's leading the way on that one there. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm agreeing with you with most of this, but your ego's leading the way there. And and look, I'm a nobody. I'm not the great Leslie Jones, but I have thoughts and opinions too, and I'm going to express mine, and I'm going to disagree with yours there. So, tough shit. <laughs> But maybe something good came out, out of all this after all. By the end of the shoot, I knew so much more than I did when I started. By the end, I was thinking, this shit won't ever happen again. I know I'm not big, I'm not a big star yet, so by your own admission. But after this motherfucker, after figuring this out, I'm about to release the Kraken. Why would the world be so against the female Ghostbusters? It's iconic. What does that say about everyone? I think if we made it now, things might be different. Who knows? Oh no, I forgot about the reaction to the Black Mermaid. Yeah, that shit was ridiculous. And that foreign journalist who asked us stuff to justify the movie to him? Let's see, how much more do we got of this? Because this is this is like coming off like in a way you are a victim, undoubtedly, with the hating and the trolls and the racism. But you're making this whole thing about you. I got issues with that. I've been so good at doing press lately. I did 22 interviews. I said to Melissa and Kirsten and Kate and Lauren Roseman, the publicist, after they told me about the foreign journalist bitch-ass question. You all didn't let me at him? I deserve that. You didn't let me get in the room with him and Bronx tail his ass? I would have locked the door and said, now you can't leave, motherfucker. Oh, jeez. Leslie, there's such a thing called professionalism, even in acting. You are a victim in some aspects, with the Twitter and the racial shit, undoubtedly. But, but, the whole thing wasn't just about you. Not everyone who hated the film is a racist. Not everyone who hated the film is a sexist. Like I said, there are plenty of women who didn't like the film. Do they hate their own gender? You're making all this about you when there are elements that affected you undoubtedly. And I'm being very fair here. But you're acting like, wow, you were hired in a Ghostbusters reboot. So therefore, you own a major part of the Ghostbusters brand. You don't. You know who does? Who does? Jason Reitman, Ivan Reitman, may he rest in peace. Dan Aykroyd, who is basically the George Lucas of Ghostbusters. Um, uh, Harold Ramis, who has since passed away. The, you know, this the owners of uh, Sony, and all that. It's not all about you, Leslie. Hate to break it to you, it's not all about you. You do have some valid points, and then there are some points that are just, just absolutely egotistical, ridiculous. Sorry, but not sorry. You have a right to your book, you're, I'm sure you're going to make money. These are your thoughts, these are your opinions, you have every right to express them. I have a right to express mine. <laughs> Anyway, this is Al. Thank you so much for watching. I'll catch you guys later. Peace.